basically from this position here to this position here where maybe my belly button is facing the sky, I have my arm underneath his arm, maybe my arm is over top of his shoulder and I'm here, this is still cross side to me, right? Even if I'm able to jump over his arm and over here, you see how this is still cross side? If I'm able to turn, so I'm facing him, I still consider this cross side. And if I'm able to this side here, or my, or my lattice control is neck, this is still cross side to me. And if I'm strong on this side, once again, this is all cross side. I consider cross side to be anything from this part of his belt all the way over to this spectrum. Now, there's many different ways to control cross side. It's one of the most diverse positions. A common a common flaw when people are maintaining cross side is that they're here, but they're just arbitrarily switching their hip. There is no rhyme or reason for them to be doing so. All right? You have to understand that every single movement that you make, it has to have purpose. This is very similar to people who are striking and they just always move their hands. There is so much arbitrary movement that they're just doing a whole bunch of nothing. All right? So we want to make our movements purposeful. Now, a common thing that a person will do when you're in um, top cross side is that they'll put their hand on your hip. Why? Because they're trying to push away here. They're trying to create space and possibly trying to put their guard in. Okay? This is what a lot of people will do. This also happens when you're trying to pass. Maybe you don't have that tight of a cross side yet. You're not that high. And then maybe you're here, but they'll try and push your hip so that they, you can't come any closer. All right? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a solution to that problem. Now, let's make the problem very precise. Basically, the person is just going to put their palm around the crest of your hip. Okay, this is their palm and it's not their forearm. It's a little bit tougher to do this with the forearm, so we're just going to make it easy. We're just going to make this easy. So, when I have cross side, I have Joe's neck, everything's going well for me, but you see how he puts his palm on my, on my hip and he's just trying to push. What I'm going to do is see I'm switching my hip. So, I'm turning my body. Here. And thus, I'm making my hip disappear. There's nothing for me to push against. All right? So this is a great way for me to dissolve, for me to dissolve his push. However, what I want to do is I want to follow up with this and look at my legs, look at my legs. I'm just going to scissor my leg so that my knee comes up to his head. And now I've trapped his arm. And now I've trapped his arm. Can you pull your arm out? It's very difficult. See how I'm still controlling his neck, I'm still cradling his neck, and I'm pulling my elbow in to my hip bone so he can't escape. When I get into that position, he's gonna push, switch. See how high my knee goes? Right to his head. I don't stick it out because I do hand to here. I don't just, I don't go like this. See, my knee is to his shoulder, this is wrong. I go right here where my knee is lined with his spine directly underneath his head. See how high it goes. From here, I'm still controlling his neck, and now my knee is going to stay low to the floor. I don't want to have to come up because you see his arm could possibly block it. I want to go underneath his arm, so my knee is very close to the floor. I'm scissoring my knees together, but also know how high my knee goes once again. From this point, I actually have two arm bars. Both of his arms are taken out of play. The first arm bar is the arm that's here on the close arm. You see how I'm just going to slide my head close to his torso, and I'm just going to throw my leg over, and you see how... There's the first arm bar. The second arm bar will be on the far side. I just put my hand on the far side of his neck. I'm going to pop top here. And you see how I have a pressing arm bar. Sometimes it's called a reverse arm bar. My friend Stefan calls this a razor lock because it's like I'm moving my forearm like a razor down his arm. All right? We can talk about both these locks in a moment. But the key thing, actually, Adam, can I borrow you, please, so that Joe can see the movement, is to go and take that arm out of play. So the mistake, the mistake that I want everybody to understand is the arbitrary movement that, that could be happening from top cross side people just switching their head, but for no reason. Understand that if he does nothing, I'm just going to be right here. This is fine. He's going to maintain the position. However, if he does push on my hip, you see how I dissolve the push by switching my hip. I turn. Thus, there's nothing for him to push against. Look how high my knee goes right against his temple. I should be weird that I'm going to go and hit him in the, in the head. From here, my knee stays low against the floor. I don't want to bring it high. You can see how his arm blocks me. Or I, can't, I can't get the position that I want. It stays nice and low, and you see how high my knee goes. Here, I'm controlling his arm with my elbow. So my elbow is, is on top of my lap. Can you pull your arm up? No. And I want everybody to go try this. So one more time, please. Push on my hip. Side push. 
I switch my hip, my knee comes up really high, and then I scissor my knee, and then the conventional cross that I use, post it, add up, or you set up a knee, and pull it, so it's not going to be I should be trapping your arm, the person should be able to pull their arm out.